Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. So I finally got around to watching Fresh after seeing so much praise on social media about it. I went into this film completely blind, avoiding the trailers, reviews, um, I didn't even read the synopsis for the film and wow, I did not expect what unfolded. This film took me on a ride and I loved every minute of it. Just before we jump right in, if you're new here, I'm Emma and this is Sketchy Ed where I discuss and review all things dark, creepy, and disturbing. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to hit subscribe so you can stay updated. Okay, let's go. Released earlier this month on Hulu and Disney+, Plus, Fresh is a horror dark comedy directed by Mimi Cave as her directorial debut, and what an impressive debut at that. When Noah, a young single woman trying to navigate the disappointing world of internet dating, meets Steve, a charming young man, while grocery shopping, they totally hit it off. Things are going great until Steve invites her to go away for the weekend with him, and soon her fairy tale turns to a nightmare when she has to survive his unusual appetites. To start off this review, I'd like to discuss the characters of the film, which were a major highlight for me. They were all so likeable, which really elevated the story. Daisy Edgar-Jones stars as our main protagonist, Noah, and opposite her, Sebastian Stan, as her new beau, Steve. They both did amazing in their respective roles, and they had strong chemistry together. I didn't recognise Daisy Edgar-Jones from any previous work, but I really loved her character, Noah. I felt like this was a character that I would be friends with in real life. She actually really reminds me of one of my best friends who's also single and trying to navigate the whole online dating thing in your late 20s, early 30s, which let me tell you is not fun. <laughs> Noah is totally relatable. She's awkward, she's cynical and she's quirky, which makes her endearing. And for us as an audience, it makes us really care for her character. So whenever I see Sebastian Stan, I always think of one character in particular. Carter Bazin from Gossip Girl. I honestly don't know why that is because I've seen him in other roles more recently, such as The Devil All the Time and I, Tonya, which he's amazing in. So it's really unfortunate that my mind just always goes back to Gossip Girl because his character in that show was just a bit meh. But I'm happy to report that after seeing this film, I believe that all of that will be overridden by his phenomenal performance in Fresh playing Steve. Despite Steve's ill intentions and the fact that he's a complete psychopath, Sebastian Stan still manages to make this character feel charming and goofy and quite likeable. I mean, maybe that's just my toxic trait where I see the good in all people, but I still really like this character. Obviously, I found what he was doing was absolutely horrific and despicable, but man, every time he was on screen, I couldn't help but smile. He actually gave me major Marc Duplass from Creep vibes the whole time, which is a major compliment because I love that film and I love that character as well. So kudos. The dynamic between these two characters is awesome. They both complement each other really well. They're both quite quirky and just an absolute joy to watch on screen. Just before we move on, I've also got to make a quick mention of Jojo T. Gibbs playing Noah's BFF Molly. And I'm going to completely butcher this pronunciation, but um, Deo Okeniyi <laughs> playing bartender Paul. Molly brought strong feminine energy to the film and is a total badass. She's definitely the kind of friend that every girl needs in her life. Paul, on the other hand, was a big part of the comic relief of the film, which worked really well. When it comes to plot and how the story played out, I think this was executed incredibly well. This film manages to address very taboo and disturbing subject matter and make it feel lighthearted and fun. I think it was a genius decision by the director to make it this way. It would have been a completely different film if the tone was serious the whole time and probably a film that I wouldn't have liked quite as much. The gorgeous warm tones, the slick stylization and upbeat music all work together to set the mood of this film. These elements starkly juxtapose the content of the film, making it a perfect balance of light and dark. There was also the frequent use of extreme close-ups, which were cleverly used to both intrigue and disgust the audience, depending on what was being shown on camera. 
The film's runtime is an hour and 54 minutes and it was paced nicely. For a movie that's just shy of two hours long, it certainly didn't feel like it. While on the topic of timing, I need to highlight the genius decision of the 30 minute setup of this film. It seriously felt like I was watching this light, fun, romantic comedy for the first half an hour of the film and then BAM, shit got real and only then did the title card and the opening credits start to roll. I thought this was brilliant. It really excited me and I just was so, so keen to see what ride this was going to take me on. Mimi Cave is not messing around. She had a strong vision and she totally pulled it off. When it comes to criticisms of the film, the major one for me was that there were quite a few loose ends and questions left unanswered. Without giving away any spoilers, there were parts of the film that were presented to us throughout um, that weren't given any clear conclusions to by the end of it. There was also symbolism that we kept seeing throughout the film, which I don't know, I thought that it might eventuate to something or they would explain it more, but yeah, it didn't really go into it at all. <laughs> there were also some characters which I thought they would go and explain some of their backstory. Um, we get presented with certain things and you think it's going to go somewhere, but we never really get any answers. But yeah, that being said, this didn't take any of the enjoyment away from the film for me. And it made me kind of wonder if they'd left it open-ended on purpose for the audience to make their own conclusions. Another more obvious criticism that some people may have issue with is the subject matter that it focuses on. Um, it's a bit of a disturbing subject, so it could upset some audiences. For myself, however, it didn't negatively affect my experience. It definitely made an impact and left me shook but I thought it was so awesome and it brought something new to the table, so to speak. Another issue people may have is the way that the film ends. It's quite abrupt and feels like we're still in the thick of it all. However, the ending is also a major highlight for me. That outro song and how the scene ends was just so good. The perfect way to conclude a solid film. Overall, Fresh is a film that I think a lot of people in their 20s and 30s will be able to relate to. It's pretty much highlighting the dilemma of dating in this day and age. On one hand, you have this seemingly endless reel of disappointments when online dating versus the opposite, which is meeting someone organically in person and they turn out to be a complete psychopath. Pretty much every woman's worst nightmare. The film's strong points are in its relatable and likeable characters, strong performances, clever script, and bold creative choices. The subject matter of the film is not a new concept by any means, but the way that it's presented makes it feel like a fresh new take. I give this film a personal score of 9 out of 10. I can't stop thinking about this film. I actually watched it prior to watching X and it was my favourite film of the year so far. However, now it's tying with X, which another great film. What a great month of horror releases. Little tangent, I don't know if anyone else felt like this, but when I was watching Daisy Edgar Jones on the screen, I was thinking, you look really familiar. I, I couldn't place her though. And I when I looked later, I couldn't find any films that she'd been in that I'd seen. But I think I know what it is. I think that she looks like a cross between Anne Hathaway and Emily Mortimer. Does anyone else see that or is it just me? <laughs> anyway, I hope you like my review. I know I've got it out a little bit later. It's been out for a whole, nearly a whole month now. Just with the timing of videos, I had to push it back because I wanted to get my X review out. But now it's finally out and I don't know. If you haven't seen it, I really recommend that you do. It's on Hulu and Disney Plus, like I mentioned previously. And with this one, if you do want to watch the trailer beforehand, go ahead. <laughs> I checked the trailer out after I'd seen this film just to see how much it gives away. And it's really done well. So if you do want to check out the trailer beforehand, go ahead. It's safe. <laughs> if you've seen this film, let me know what you thought in the comments below. And if you like this review, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.